so happy that all of you are here on, to celebrate Father's Day for me. Um, it's going to be a long day. They don't get much better than that one. Sorry, that was the best one I had. It'll just be a long day. Uh, happy Father's Day to everybody. we got a gift for you in just a minute. Let me run through my announcements real quickly. If you're new or you have new information, please fill out a Connect card or so, uh, so we can keep in contact with you and what's going on. And Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. All our fathers stand, please. Amen. Let's give them a hand, would you please? If you missed any of them, we got a gift for you. Ladies, if y'all missed any, come on. Uh, y'all can remain standing for just a minute. gifts out. Thank you for being here. We got a Thank you. John said he was going to quit church and then come back and join again so he could get a coffee mug and then he didn't have to. We gave him one on Father's Day. So that was... That's good news. God bless you. You can be seated. Uh, amen. Everybody get a gift. If you didn't, it'll be out front for you. Uh, so, did y'all see this picture? Did y'all pay attention? Uh, I'm trying to figure out who all they are. I know a couple of them. I know the one on top. And the one on bottom, middle. Yeah, Benny, and then Benny's on there twice. It's important. Who's left? Who's top left? No, oh, that's somebody though. Somebody sent it to you, right? <coughs> Might be Marlis. Okay. Might be. Who is bottom right? That's Carmen and, oh, and Papa. That's Papa Lehman. That's Dana's uh, granddad, her great granddad. And then underneath Day, who is that? That's Trudy. Okay, these are the people that sent them in, evidently. So we put, send pictures. We grab sub for Facebook and we're everywhere. So, amen. All right, good deal. So we also have a QR code. Uh, if you need that we can you can scan that on your phone we'll have that in here in just a minute when we go to when I go to preach I'll have one uh, I'll have them do that it'll be it's the same QR code as last Sunday uh, and so it updated information but same QR code so that way you'll have my scriptures uh, for the message uh, today also it's getting hot somebody who is it uh is it Barry Manilow? Somebody needs to write a song, Baby, It's Hot Outside. Um, who was that? Who wrote that originally? Yeah. Is that just like a hymn? It's just like classic? And so we don't, it doesn't have to have a, a, an author. But um, we just want to, yeah, there's our QR code. Will you give me the next slide there, please? Uh, if you would, just remember, we have people that are, Especially, we're going to 100 degrees this week, and we have people that are going to need help. And so we do have a benevolence ministry. If you'd like to give to that, you can earmark that, and it'll go there. And then when people need help, um, I always say, this, is, this sounds terrible, but when someone ever calls me and I answer the phone and they say, can you, do you have anything for help? I say, well, we help our members first. Where do you go to church? Sounds terrible, but the first statement is true. We're going to help our members first, and so we want to make sure we have stuff in case somebody needs something, and if there's something extra that we have, we want to help anybody we can. Somebody say amen. 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 Is that my last one, Janon? All right. Stand again with me, please, if you will, and we're going to, we'll pray. Uh, again, thank you all for being here today. We're going to have a great day. Uh, the Lord's just doing some great things around here. If you're comfortable, Join hands with somebody near you. 
and let's pray right now. Father, you're so good. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the opportunity to come to your house and worship together with family. I just pray that you would just touch each of our hearts, quicken us, quicken our spirits, make us more like you today. Uh, I ask a special blessing on each of the fathers today, and I pray that you'd just move and work in this service today in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen.
this special time of worship. We want to say we love you. We want to say we love you, Father, and we trust you with all, all, all that we have. And we give back. We ask you to take it and multiply and use it for your glory to lift up the name of Jesus that Lewis Lane Baptist Church would be a lighthouse for the lost, the hurting, and the searching. And everybody said, you can be seated, please.
Missouri and wonder how he could love for me a sinner condemned unclean You know, as a young father, I told I really feel this good morning. I have to share this. As a young father, I told people I would do anything I could for my little girls, but I wouldn't take them to church. You see, we can let's see the buy them all kinds of stuff and four-wheelers and ball gloves and cleats and bikes and all these things. And those are all fine. But what they really need is Jesus. Now, I was raised in a home where the we went to church. But I got bored and burnt out. And I wanted to live my way. And it carried over like in my early years as a father. I have to confess this morning and I've already confessed it to my girls and that's okay. I was not a good dad. I thought it was. But the one thing they really needed, I never saw. And one God, one day God showed me the choices you're making, the life you're living, are sending your kids to hell. If there's a father listening this good morning or in this room, that that's you. First of all, you need to get right with God. And then you need to lead your family simply like in a relationship with the Lord. I'm happy to say now, As a father, one of the greatest blessings I have is to see my kids in church and see them serve the Lord. And I pray that they'll do more and more to, like I learned from 
may a very good man expand the kingdom. This morning, we have a little gift to all you fathers. There's one of us, special dad, I didn't know this going to love what is about to happen, but this is for all of you. When our kids can bless us, we know that that's a blessing from our Father through them to us. A sing the blessing.
Mic on and all, so turn it off. You know, some of you know where you were the day you heard, the moment that you heard President Kennedy got shot. Some of you know where you were when the space shuttle blew up. Now I want you to remember this moment that they sang that song. probably right there with those other significant moments in history. So remember, you were at Bruce Lane Baptist Church on Father's Day in 2022. That song got, it's funny, it said you're coming and you're going, and I love that part, and then it said, and you're weeping and you're rejoicing, I'm crying and smiling. I was like, oh, this, anyway, amen. I bless you today. Bless you with a father's blessing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Man, that's good. Amen. Let's go into the word of the Lord. Um, we are we're going to try to finish up week number uh, week number two. We're going to finally try to finish up week number one. Uh, how are you, my man? <laughs> so we. Um, if you so yeah yeah so if you have a if you need a QR code we have QR codes so you can get to our scriptures that I'm in. Pull it up on your phone if you want. Um, 
uh, Aaron and Kelly and to have those. If anybody needs that, just lift your hand. We, you can scan that real quick. They'll bring it to you. Anybody? All right, they're going to be on the screen too. So if you need that afterwards, we'll have that for you. They'll be in the they'll be in the lobby. Um, I'm just going to jump into last week and try to finish up. Just give you some quick pointers. We were talking about grace, but we we're talking about why God did what He did. Uh, and so in the Old Testament, we find that I started with uh, Adam and Eve. We went to Noah. Then we even went to the children of Israel and Moses. When sin began to grow, God told Noah, I'm going to judge the earth, build a, build, build a ship. And he put his eight people and his family inside it, closed the doors, killed everyone else, brought them out, and sin multiplied. So we concluded through that that judgment does not bring righteousness. Someone say judgment doesn't bring righteousness. So then Moses leads the children of Israel out of Egypt. They get all of the back wages from 400 years of slavery, and they have this gold, this silver, these jewels, all this um, abundance, and 40 days later, they're building a golden calf. So, so blessings don't bring righteousness. Someone say blessings don't bring righteousness. So God instituted the law, which was the rules, and he said, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And we find that no one kept those rules, and therefore, religion, rules don't bring righteousness. Someone say, uh, rules don't bring righteousness. You see, so we talked about the reason that the First of all, where are we, 519? Where are you, 520? Uh, can you go back, find 519? Uh, we'll look at Romans 519, then we'll go to 20, which is one that she has. Uh, for just as through, go ahead. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, who was the one man? Adam. The many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, who is the one man? Jesus, the many will be made righteous, okay? So we find that the seed of man was producing sin. We are born a sinner. Oh, well, my kid's not a sinner. Uh, my kid's perfect. Uh, give him about three more minutes. You see... So in God had a plan, so he instituted the law, and he gave the law so that the, the Scripture tells us in Romans 5 and 20, pop that one up there, babe. Um, I'm finding it myself here. So the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. Let's talk about that. Just You just leave it up there. But let's talk about that. So it's like the two boys walking down the street on the sidewalk just playing, and Every day they walk past to go to the playground. They walk past this one particular family's home, and he has some. They they have some really nice flowers. And uh, thank you, Mary Beth. We have they have some really nice flowers. And they as they she knew I had this illustration. She's tapped in today. If y'all need anything, just have her pray for you because she's on the right wavelength with me. So uh, the so we were she, they as they walk past, they never even saw the flowers. But the family got scared, so they put a sign in the yard, don't touch the flowers. Never even saw the flowers, but they saw the sign, which made them And they walked on past. That's what God did when he gave us the rules. That the sin might increase. I didn't know it was a problem to touch the flowers until I saw the rules. The 
Furthermore, it wasn't a problem until someone made it a rule. There was nothing wrong with eating pork until God made it a rule. Does that make sense? So the point, again, the point is not so that we would just languish in our trespass, but it was the point, the fact that we couldn't do it on our own, that we had to have a Savior. Look at your neighbor, say, you really need a Savior. Put a little bit of something in your voice when you say that, okay? Because we know who you're sitting next to. It's okay. And But where sin did increase, grace increased all the more. Now, that's not an Old Testament scripture. That's a New Testament scripture. <laughs> it didn't increase in the Old Testament. Grace didn't, but in the New Testament, he's drawing the contrast from the Old Testament to the New Testament and how things are going to be different under the New Covenant. So Romans 3 and 20, let's skip back two chapters. Romans 3 and 20 says that, therefore, is it coming? You got it in queue? Is it not ready? I'm not skipping anymore, I'm there. So let me, let me, y'all didn't know this, but last week, y'all knew this part, I, uh, I was really struggling at the end of my message to give you, to, to end it, because I was in the middle, and I was not at the end, and short version is, I was in a calorie deficit also, and my brain was pretty foggy, I only lost 14 pounds last week, um, literally, I was down 14 pounds from Monday to Sunday. And so I was really in a calorie deficit and really in a fog, and I could not think for myself. I was struggling, and my daughter scrolled through all of my verses, because she's up there in the sound booth, and she, she goes, bam! She threw a verse up on the screen that I could end with. So she, she found it and helped me out. And so whenever I say anything like that, it's certainly uh, not uh, provoking her at all. She, she helps me a lot, and so that was, uh, I'm very thankful. And, they, and both of them obviously can just, they get their singing from me. What is, what is, y'all are laughing at all the wrong times. That wasn't funny. They get their singing voice from me. Their mama still has hers. Romans 3 and 20, therefore no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we became aware that it was a sin. That makes sense? Fun fact, again, I got several different illustrations I can use on this, but God gave them 10 rules. Moses gave them 10 rules. And, of course, they had many wives at the times. And so then there were many children. They had many wives. And so there was a lot of stuff going on. And so somewhere along the line, someone came to Moses and said, Hey, is it okay if I have an affair with my mom? She's not really my mom. She's just my dad's wife. She's no kin to me. Is that okay? Moses said, you can't have an affair with your daddy's wife. He had to write it down. He had to, really? You need help with this one? Come on, guys. What is the problem here? And the problem was once there was something written down, they wanted to get as close to the line as they could. instead of living in grace. <laughs> but only through the law we became conscious of the sin. No one is declared righteous by observing the law. No one is declared righteous by judgment. No one can get righteousness by blessings. Only we become conscious of the fact 
that there is sin in our lives. And so most of you have a phone, or have, a, have a phone, have a Bible on your phone. The Bible is a mirror for mankind. I said this a few weeks ago. The only way for you to be self-righteous is for you to stop looking in the mirror and start looking at someone else. And then you you say, well, I'm better than that person, which makes me righteous in myself, which is self-righteous. The problem is, is that I'm never going to be compared with you. I'm only going to be compared with him. In the mirror of his word, looking at me. I, I, I think I've told you this, but I, I believe that something at the, at the great judgment, I believe that's going to be something to the effect of me standing there when it's my turn, and then next to me is something to the effect of a hologram. Just, it's, that word's not in scripture, and I know that. And it's the perfect me. It's used up every ounce of potential that I have. That's what I'm going to be compared against because in, the, ta- in, the, in the, the parable of the talents, there's five talents. You with five talents that I gave you, come here. He never compared him to the, talent, the guy that had three or the guy that had two or had one. He only compared him to the one that had five, and that was him. What'd you do? Okay, good. You're blessed. I don't have to be compared with five talent people. I get compared to me and what I've done. I answer for what I've done and not done. So mankind was brought to look into the word of God as a mirror so that we would grow aware of our consciousness, of, uh, the consciousness of sin would grow. So mankind was corrupted. I read you the scripture a minute ago, was corrupted by one man, Adam, right? So mankind was corrupted by the sin of one man, could not escape, could not come to an end of the ourselves. We must be saved from ourselves. What is the answer to mankind's sin? This one's not a trick question. I know some of you are scared because I ask trick questions sometimes. They're not all trick questions. What's the answer to mankind's sin? Who is the answer to mankind's sin? There you go. So he's actually the what answer. He's the where answer. He's the why answer. He's he's all of those. But so the answer to mankind's sin is Jesus. Since the problem was man, God needed a man to solve the problem. And as he looked for a man to solve the problem, he couldn't find any. So he said, "I'll just take some skin." And I'll make I'll I'll go myself. So the scripture says, we're gonna go through go to John 1 here. It's the scripture says, in the fullness of time, as spoken by the prophets, God sent his son. Go to John 1 and 1 first, if we got that. Do you have it? I don't know if you got it or not. If you don't, it's fine, just leave it there. He's fine. God, in the fullness of time, God sent his son, the word, somebody say the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word that we're talking about is Jesus. Jesus, the word, the, the, ah, this is fun, the word, word literally means the seed, the thought the intent. So God planted the word inside a woman. Verse 1, four, chapter 1, 14. She's finding them for me as we go here. So the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. He is Emmanuel, which interpreted means God with us. 
He's the Word made flesh to dwell among us. In verse 10 and 11, we have that. We're going to go back to 19 in a second, but 10 and 11 of John 1. He came to that which was his own, but his own rejected him. His own did not receive him. He came to that which his own, but his own did not receive him. He was in the world, verse 10 said, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. You see, the world rejected him. Romans 5, 19, let's switch back over. I'm, I'm making her work here today. I'm making her earn her money. For just as through the obedience, disobedience of the one, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one, many, one man, the many were, will be made righteous. So Jesus, the difference in, one of the differences in Jesus and me is that Jesus was not born with a sin nature. Oh, you got to get this. You got to get this. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus didn't have a sin nature. Okay? Scientists, medical scientists have proven that all the blood that a fetus has comes through the father. Human. Okay? Okay? All the blood comes through a comes through the Father. Adam sinned and gave his seed, a corrupt seed, to his wife, and she bare him children after the corrupt seed. But when the, script, the scripture says that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she conceived, it did not have the sin nature, sin blood, corruptible seed that was in Adam because he was the second Adam. The blood that would have come, the, the seed that created the blood in the fetus that would have come from a natural father was not passed on through the heavenly father because he had incorruptible seed, the scripture says. So when Jesus was born, he was born without the sin nature. John 1, 12. Yet to all, all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. They earmarked 12 there. I want, we'll probably come back to that in just a second as I close. 13. Children born of a natural descent nor of human decision or of human will, but born, born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or human husband's will, but born of God. Again, not of natural because of the natural, we have a sin nature. Now we have the right to become children who are no longer born after the natural sin. This is really, really good. I hope you like this. I hope you understand this. To all who receive him, to those who will believe or to, you're given the right to become the children of God. Once we're born, we've got to be born again, not of the natural, but of the supernatural, which gives us no longer a sin nature. Now we have the nature of our second father, of our spiritual father. And when he births something, it doesn't have the sin nature. Oh, I just want to slap something. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. That's how we can declare this scripture. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is 
So listen, I mean, I ain't going to fight with you about it. This is, this, I'm just going to try to present the word to you, give you a little bit of the way I interpret some of this stuff. But this is where I can tell you that I no longer confess over myself that I am a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner saved by grace. Now I am a child of God. I hope I've laid that out for you to be able to understand why I say that. Now, here's the big kicker is the scripture says now we have the potential. Now we have the power to become, the right to become a child of God. It all is about what we live and what we confess over ourselves. 1 John 4 and 17. This is how love is made complete among us. So that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world. We're like Jesus. What part are we like Jesus? We're like him because we now on the spiritual have no longer have the sin nature. One verse, Romans 6 and 14. And I'm going to let all your dads go so you can go to the grill and cook food for everybody. What in the world is wrong with this holiday? We take mom out to eat. We stick dad on a grill. Happy, happy Father's Day. Go cook for 25 people. Romans 6 and 14. For sin shall no longer be your master because you're not under. Somebody say under the law. But now we're under grace. Uh, worship team, y'all come on. Let me, I want to close with this. So I have to say it this way so that you can appreciate it. I read one of the trips that I made to uh, South Africa, I bought Nelson Mandela's uh, unabridged autobiography. I say the word unabridged and you do not appreciate the fact that it was unabridged. You can't appreciate it clearly and until I tell you it was just about 20 pages short of a 1,000. And I read that thing from cover to cover only because later in life I was going to preach a message and say I read the whole thing. No, it's not right. Just kidding. But I read that and the title of the book is The Long Walk to Freedom. And it, it, it comes through Mandela's life and it's a phenomenal book and you ought to read it. You, you ought to at least read the abridged version. It's a phenomenal book. But the last two pages did as good of closing a book as I have ever read. Three paragraphs from the end, four or five paragraphs from the end, he makes this statement, and I'm not going to quote it. I'm going to just give you my remembrance of it, and it'll be really close. My paraphrase. He said, now that apartheid has been broken... My countrymen and I are not free. Where's my scripture book, babe? I said to Peg, uh, we'll pop that one back up in just a second, okay? Or it's fine, just leave it, yeah. So he said, my countrymen and I are not free. We have merely gained the right to be free. And then he said, and now begins the long walk to freedom. Should have titled my message this morning, The Long Walk to Freedom. But Nelson Mandela already did his, so I would be. You see, what I'm preaching to you this morning about grace, you may not feel free. You may not be walking in perfect freedom of grace. Not a problem. We've got the right to be free. And it's a long walk to be able to retrain. Hmm. Mm. It's a long walk to freedom, but I tell you what we ought to do. We ought to join hands with each other and take off walking toward Jesus. Because if we'll do that, then suddenly somebody stumbles, we'll be there holding their hand and we'll be, no, 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 no. That's not who you are. That's who you used to be. You are the righteousness of God. You're his child. You're the apple of his eye. Come on. Let's go. Let's walk. Let's don't 
wallow in that mistake. Let's walk toward freedom. I know it's not easy. I know it's not going to be easy. But all the good things in life never are easy. God never promised easy. Not everybody can be married to her. He never promised easy, but he promised worth it. The struggle is worth it. Y'all know that we have bees, and we got devastated this winter. Our bees got devastated. We, I don't think I'll have one jar of honey this year or something like this. Terrible. It's hurting my brain. Uh, but I was in the bees yesterday. And the stages of what the queen has laid, the queen will lay a seed, and it looks like a tiny grain of rice. Just a tiny little grain of rice. And then it grows, and it becomes larva, and they're still feeding it for three, four, five days, however many it is. And then they cap it over, and then it's in that cocoon, if you will, and then it comes out. And so every once in a while, it's so neat. Every once in a while, we'll, we'll be able to, when we're in there, uh, we'll be able to see one of those baby bees being born, if you want to say it that way, and breaking through that cocoon and coming out. They've told me, make sure you don't help. But, but that bee needs to be born. Don't make sure you don't help. Because that baby bee needs the struggle. Yeah, but I want it to fly. It's got, somebody can preach right now, to struggle before it can fly. Amen. Now we have been given the right. Grace has given us the right to be the children of God. It's God's grand plan. It's his idea from the beginning. Everything he was doing was leading up to us figuring out grace, how it applies to our life so that we can be his children. Amen. Let's stay. And I hope that helped you. I really, last week, I was so uh, concerned. I was so, it was, it was so on my heart that I was leaving us in a bad spot. Uh, that I just told about how, how bad all of you were. But I, how it's, you know, it can't be, it can't be righteous, can't be righteous, can't be righteous. No, no, we can be righteous. We just can't be righteous through those ways. We can be righteous through grace. So that's where I was trying to get last week, and I had all of this to tell about. So grace gives us the right to be the children of God. And it's going, for, for many, it'll be a long walk, but we're going to get there. So look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you want to walk to freedom with me? Some of you just looked at each other, said that, and never even blinked. Others of you said that and actually gave them a hug. So I don't, I'm not sure the difference in that, but whatever. Everybody needs a walking buddy. Man. Let's, let's bow our heads, would you? You've never given your heart to the Lord. Today's your day. Today is the day to begin your walk toward freedom. <laughs> you, grace is here to give you the right to become a child of God. If you're in this room, if you're watching online, today is your day. If that's you, lift your hand. 
Anyone in the room? All right. Now, the rest of us, already saved, would you just be bold enough to say, Ben, some of this is new. Some of this I haven't. It's going to be a long walk, but I want freedom more than I want to stay where I am. Would you lift your hand? While your heads are bowed, I want to give you a real powerful concept. Sometimes in our journey, in our adventure, in, th- in life, not even necessarily in God, but in life, we don't have clear direction on which way to move, so we don't move. Let me help you now. In Christ and in a lot of things in life, The way to get from point A to B is to want to be at B more than you want to stay at A. It's just moving. It's just, I'm not staying here. So let's pray right now. Father, every hand that was raised, every heart that was lifted to you today that said, I want freedom in my life every person in the room that raised their hand. Lord, I pray that you would just begin to just increase that desire, increase that hunger, Lord, and and restlessness of staying where we are, that we're going to not stay here. We're going to move towards you. I pray that you would even cause a, a holy dissatisfaction with where we are in our relationship with you. Not about salvation, but just about the fact of whether or not we're comfortable staying here or we know there's more in you that we need to go for. And I pray that you do that right now. I pray that you do that on every heart in this room, every person here, every person watching online, Lord, that you would stir us, stir our spirits. That nothing less than freedom it satisfies in Jesus name if you'd like prayer altars open I'd love to pray with you if you have something and you'd like to uh, whatever the prayer is I don't know it doesn't matter I'd love to pray with you if some of you are you've not joined our church if you'd like to be a part of our church family on a more permanent basis we'd love to have you God bless you you can come down for that too uh, while we while we sing you are here moving in our